Well, good evening, y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. I've got several new subscribers, and I just want to welcome y'all to the kitchen. Hope you come real often. Tap that little bell so you'll be notified when I put up a new video. And um, hit that like button. I like to get those likes. That makes me feel like I'm doing something good. And also, when you click like on a video, I think it puts it into your like folder, and it's easier to find it if you want to go back to it and, and make it again. So, today we're going to make banana pudding brownies. Now, they don't have anything to do with brownie. They're not chocolate, but you can cut them and pick them up and eat them like a brownie and taste pretty much like a banana pudding. So, I'm going to get you all over to the mixer, and we're going to mix up the first part of it and get it in the pan. Then we'll go back and mix up the filling, and y'all will see what we're doing. But uh, we're going to have a good dessert after a while. Y'all, it's cold in Texas again. I think the cold is, it's not that cold temperature-wise. It's probably maybe 45. I don't know, maybe 50, but it's real damp. And it just makes it feel colder when it's like that. But I have something else happy going on, too. He don't want on the camera. But I got a few uh, raised beds for the garden from... Um, uh, who did I get? Northern Tools. They had them on sale. Twi they're just 12 inches deep, 4 by 8. But I can grow some stuff in the backyard, and I feel safe closed in my wood fence to backyard. I feel safe back there working out by myself. And Troy's not going to be able to work the big gardens like he has in the past, so I'm going to just concentrate on growing stuff in the back. I'm going to get it all set up. I hope I can get it set up pretty. I'll take the camera back there to show y'all what I'm doing. I got some plans. I just hope I can make them come to pass like I want them to. But right now we're going to get on over to the KitchenAid and make the crust for this brownie that we're going to be making. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is um, we have to create, well, let's see. I think we're going to make our crust first, aren't we? So I need to whip three, it calls for two eggs and a yolk. Well, I'm doing three small eggs. And I'm just going to beat them just a little bit. We're going to need two kinds of sugar. We're going to need a third of a cup of just granulated white sugar. And I'll whiz that a little bit. And I need two cups of brown sugar. Now, I didn't pack this. I just measured it, scooped it off, and put it in here. So, we need a cup of melted butter. Let me make sure my battery's still good. This is kind of hot, it's going to melt my sugar, I'm sure. Liquidy, isn't it? Tell you what I'm going to do. I've got to add in two and a half cups of flour, so I'm going to go ahead and put some of that in there to take care of some of that butter right quick. And the rest of my two and a half cups of flour. And I need a teaspoon each of salt and baking powder. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Well, get in there. And we'll mix this up. That screw's about to come out. Make sure I got it all. And we're going to take this over to the pan and get it in the bottom. And then we got to mix up the next layer and get it on there. So let me get this over there. And y'all can just 
work with me while I work here. Okay, I've lined this 9 by 13 uh, baking dish with parchment so I can lift this out when the time comes. And I'm going to just put this bottom part in here and spread it out as evenly as I can. Don't y'all like good desserts that are easy but they taste yummy? Well, I do. And I tell you, I like, I've told you before, I love the taste of brown sugar. It's that molasses that's in it, I guess. But I like it. It's cold enough, we got a fire in the fireplace. That's pretty good for us to get to use the fireplace. Old folks, it's cold. The only thing I don't like about parchment, I don't feel like I got it up in the corners good enough. Okay, I'm going to rinse my bowl off and we'll go back to the mixer and we'll make the filling that goes on the top of this. Okay, for the filling, and I didn't wash the bowl, I just scraped it out good. We need eight ounces of cream cheese softened to room temperature. And I'm gonna mix that just a little bit. And we need one box, the small box, I think it's three the little box of vanilla pudding, I can't see. 3.4 ounces maybe is what it says. I told y'all I have to wear cheaters and I don't wear them all the time. You know what, I should have whipped my eggs first, but I didn't. I'm going to add them into this cream cheese and mix them right quick. Two eggs. I'll let that mix. Then I'll add my pudding and all. I decided that I would go ahead and put the whisk on because I made a mistake doing it that way. Okay, now I'm going to add in my small package of vanilla pudding. And then I need to add in one third of a cup of regular milk. I call it sweet milk. It's what I grew up calling it. You just want to whisk this or beat it until it's smooth. Because this is the pudding part of this banana pudding bar. Okay, now we need to add in banana extract. What am I doing here? I didn't even know they made banana extract till I started making this and I found out they did. Well, they've got a little thingy here that's supposed to pop up for you to get that off, but it's not cooperating with me. Let me tell you something. I had to do surgery on this thing to get the get down to the goodie. One. That's because we're not actually putting bananas in it, and you want that banana flavor. All 
ready, I'll get y'all back over to the butcher block and we'll finish up. Okay, I'm just going to put this filling over the top of the other. Try to spread it evenly on there. You want it all the way to the edge. Of course. I hope y'all can see what I'm doing here. I got my sleeve in the way. Okay, we got our pudding on the top now. And then we got to add some vanilla wafers. Now the recipe called for 20, but these are the little Dutch made. They may be a little smaller. So we'll see. And it said to do it in the 4 by 6 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, that's more than 20, isn't it? I'm just going to put what I think it needs. It makes, it'll make it easier to cut it into pieces, I guess, if they're not crowding up the middle. But the vanilla wafer is what I like, so I'm going to go ahead and add some extras. Y'all can follow the recipe exactly if you want to. At least I didn't put onion and garlic powder in it, y'all. I'm doing good. That's usually my rule breaker. There's a little piece I could put right there. Okay, I'm going to bake this for 350, at 350, and I'll come back and tell y'all how long it takes it to bake. Okay, hey y'all, it's cooked 45 minutes, and they say it's supposed to be golden brown, and you can see right here that it's browner, but it's done, and I'm not going to keep cooking it. I'm afraid it'll dry it out or even burn it on the bottom. So when it cools, I'll take it out of the pan and plate it up, cut it and plate it, and I'll come back and show y'all what it looks like. Okay, it's pretty well cooled, not completely, but I'm going to lift it out of here. And put it on the butcher block. Let's get something to put it on when I cut it. I didn't get something real pretty. In fact, it's a. I think it's made for picnics, and I got it at Walmart. If they'd have had red, guess what? I'd have got red ones. But I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to scoop it up and put it on this plate. Troy, I had to go get a wisdom tooth pulled this week. And uh, I had never been to the dentist before for a tooth to be pulled. I have had uh, one broke and they put a half cap on it. And I've had a couple of cavities, but I've never had a tooth pulled. So I told the dentist, I said, only time I've had a tooth pulled is the tooth fairy. And he said, well, it's reversed now. Uh, instead of the tooth fairy bringing you money, you have to pay to get that tooth pulled. So Troy just asked me, was the tooth fairy, uh, was, did he need to bring his own fork and bowl, or was the tooth fairy going to bring it to the table? So he's wanting some of this. 
so I'm fixing to get it cut and get over there and give him some of it. And the reason they said they said 24 vanilla wafers, that's what your recipe will say, in a four by six pattern. It's because you can cut between them and have it pretty. But I just did it my way and I put them all over the top. And so it's not gonna have, it's gonna have, you know, it's gonna have some broken ones because I'm having to cut through them. But if I'd paid attention, lined them up right, it's been different. Y'all see how it just very, very good looking stuff here. should have cooked it longer. I don't, my crust is not real crusty. Maybe that's why my top's not brown. Bet it'll taste good though. Here's the, uh, what I've dished up. Tastes pretty good. I've licked my finger. Let me get his plate. I'm going to use my fine china. I think some of y'all probably have some just like it. That's just good stuff. Let me see what it tastes like. That's good. But when you cook it, and I did it 45 minutes, but it says till the top is golden brown. So I think if I'd have cooked it that other 10 or 12 minutes, that it would have taken to get the top all golden brown. This middle section here, the bottom one, probably would have been a little bit more cake-like. But it sure is yummy like it is. It's almost like banana pudding. So y'all need to try this one too. I like it when I get something that's different and new and easy, and on top of that, it's good. And this one qualifies for all of that. I'm going to see if Troy wants milk with his or what he wants with it. And I will serve him some banana pudding brownies. And y'all, feel like I've got banana pudding on my teeth. We are in perilous times. Our pastor taught a lesson Tuesday night on the end time from the scripture standpoint. Perilous times are, are difficult times, they're scary times, times of upheaval. And I'm going to tell you what, we don't know what's going on. We don't know what to expect. We know what we've heard on the news and it's not something that I want to hear. I've got um, four grandsons. I'm kind of concerned. Got a granddaughter. I don't know what our administration will do or demand or whatever you want to call it. I am being a very prayerful Nana. I'm praying for the Ukraine. I'm praying for America. I'm praying for us. We don't know what we're facing. So once again, let me admonish you. Get you a few extra things at your house. They may or may not be available. The truckers are doing in the U.S. what they did in Canada, maybe on a smaller scale, I'm not sure. That means trucking is going to slow down. The shelves will be empty, maybe. Could be, probably will be. So y'all need to have some extra staple stuff on your pantry shelf where you can feed yourself and your family and you won't be so stressed. That don't mean run out and spend money that you don't have allocated for groceries. It just means to be wise and have a little bit of stuff ahead. Enjoy life. Don't let the things, the world conditions that are going on zap you of all of your joy. My grandson said something about this didn't, you know, it wasn't any fun to think about, in other words, planning for the future because we don't know what we're facing. And I said, you know what, Jordan? You live every day like you've got a hundred years ahead of you. 
but you watch and you be vigilant and you pay attention to what's going on around you. You don't quit living and quit planning because things look bleak and dreary. Get all the sugar out of day, today that you can get. Do your best to please the good Lord and keep a good line open with Him. And enjoy what life you have. And then if hard times come, we'll just deal with it. But we don't have to borrow trouble and not have a good time because of the what ifs. So if you're a worrier, put your worries aside. Don't be fretful. Just enjoy the day while we have some good times because we don't know if they'll last or not. That's what I'm going to do. And when I go to bed at night, I'm going to be said my prayers and I'm going to shut my eyes and go to sleep and rest like a baby. Because the Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is fixed on me. So that's where I'm going to try to abide. Under the shadow of the Almighty, according to Psalms 91, there's promises there. If you haven't read Psalms 91, get your Bible and read it. It'll make you feel better. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. And I'll be back as soon as I can with another uh, recipe. Richard is not doing well for, I know I'll get a bunch of questions. In fact, they're talking about sending him home. He's still in the hospital. It's been about four weeks. And they're talking about sending him home on hospice. So we don't know what we're facing. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But we sure know who holds tomorrow. And we're going to trust in the good Lord and just live our life. The way he's got our steps ordered, it's all we can do. I'll see y'all in a little bit.